our country is being invaded. This is a war. Drugs are killing tens of thousands of Americans every year. Every shipment of fentanyl is a ticking time bomb. Every life lost to fentanyl is a tragedy. Every one of those pills yeah. is an unregulated pharmaceutical that right. can snuff out your life like that. Yeah. You're playing Russian roulette. As Mexican cartels flood the country with illegal painkillers. The Sinaloa cartel supplies most of the fentanyl in the U.S. and is largely responsible for more than 100,000 overdose deaths in 2021 alone. This is not like cocaine or heroin. This is a synthetic. People in the United States say, oh, these drugs are all coming from Mexico, but it's only part of the story. CBS reports journeys to a cartel stronghold. They're probably checking us out if they haven't already. It is said that all the names of the passengers landing in Culiacan, the cartel know who they are. To uncover why the U.S. government is failing to stop them. What is your role in the Sinaloa cartel? Ashley was, she was a different kid. She was beautiful and smart and funny and social. She was a mom. She has a beautiful son. She was a free spirit. She was just an amazing human. She's not with us anymore. What happened? On May 23rd of 2021, she purchased four tablets from a lifetime drug dealer. And then she was poisoned to death by half a tablet of what she thought was Percocet, but contained five milligrams of fentanyl. One half of one tablet. A lot of the PSAs say one pill can kill, but it was actually one half of the pill that killed her. The grief of losing a child is immense. It's like strangles you, you can't breathe. Thank you for sharing your story really important because this is unlike the drugs that we saw any time before. No. I don't think you ever recover from a loss of a child. I don't think you do. I just think you learn to live with it. But you don't heal from it. Instead, you fight. My government's going to do something. I believe that with all my heart. Fentanyl was designed as a miracle painkiller, especially to help cancer patients. But over the past decade, illicitly produced fentanyl became the most commonly abused drug in America and the world's deadliest opioid. Knockoffs supercharged an epidemic and renewed a rallying cry for the U.S. war on drugs. The Sinaloa cartel supplies most of the fentanyl in the U.S. 50 times more powerful than heroin. Plaguing communities and destroying lives from coast to coast. The most common cause of poisoning deaths of children. One of the most pressing national security and public health challenges costing the nation an estimated $1 trillion a year. Every shipment of fentanyl is a ticking time bomb. Every life lost to fentanyl is a tragedy. This port of entry sees more fentanyl than any other port of entry in the U.S. In fact, over half of it is interdicted here. And the problem just keeps growing and growing and growing. In the first six months of 2023, officers have seized more fentanyl than they had in the last five years combined. You see a lot of 200,000 pill loads. Uh -huh. We've seen all the way up to 1.6 million pills in a load. The numbers are so astronomical. Every one of those pills yeah. is an unregulated pharmaceutical that right. could snuff out your life like that. Yeah. So yeah. that's 200,000 bullets in the gun. You're playing Russian roulette. Every time you, you take one of these pills, it's being made in a warehouse someplace right. in Mexico. 
I was ambassador to Mexico from 2019 to 2021. Tell me about, about the U.S. and its war on the cartels, war on drugs. We've been trying to eradicate uh, drugs and get that issue under control for 50 years and frankly have not been very successful. I think the problem has gotten worse. We're facing really a new kind of problem. So I'm particularly concerned about what that means for where we go from here. In 2023, the White House announced a crackdown against illicit fentanyl supply chains. President Biden asked Congress for more than $46 billion to do it. So let's launch a major surge to stop fentanyl production and the sale and trafficking with more drug detection machines, inspection cargo, stop pills and powder at the border. Troy Miller is in charge of America's border agency. I think CBP is well positioned to lead the government in our counter fentanyl efforts. This last year, we had an operation called Blue Lotus, where we surged resources to uh, California and Arizona, and we seized 10,000 pounds of fentanyl in two months. Operations are temporary. Do you have the resources and the commitment from the federal government to really tackle this in a way that will have a measurable impact? It is one of our top priorities. Do we need additional resources to continue to do what we're doing? Uh, yes, this is not like cocaine or heroin. This is a synthetic, um, so it's very difficult to estimate what we're catching and what we're not. And seizures uh, don't necessarily uh, mean anything other than we're seizing more drugs. We're going to continue to figure out ways to affect the supply chain. Aren't these strategies, though, the same strategies that we've empl employed for decades now? What's different? I think our partnerships are better than ever. We're never going to stop narcotics completely, but I believe that we can have an effect on, on fentanyl and the folks that are smuggling fentanyl. Officials concede that seizing drugs is only one step in curbing the power of the cartels. To find out how cartels maintain the upper hand in this battle, we have to go beyond the border. This is the Sinaloa cartel territory. Absolutely. You've dealt with them many, many years now. Yes. They know me, I know them. Miguel Angel Vega is a journalist, born and raised in the heart of narco territory. We hired him to show us a side of this cartel stronghold that only locals usually get to see. This is Culiacan, home base for the Sinaloa cartel, fortified by a vast surveillance network Roughly how many people are we talking about? We're talking at least 2,000 people. Wow. In the all, city? All over the city. All over the city. Not to mention the sicarios, the gunmen. They're probably checking us out, if they haven't already. It is said that all the names of the passengers landing in Culiacan, the cartel, you know who they are. <laughs> Still, there is a sense of fear that might be an undercover officer, DA. Uh, you know, landing in Culiacan, you can make a phone call, they give you a tracking group, entire conversation. They have drones, they have technology, they can corrupt all, all this violence in the city. The cartels have access to some of the most sophisticated spyware technology in the world. They have used it to launch targeted counteroffensives against anyone trying to investigate them. So any electronic communication, we should assume that we're being monitored. Very likely. Yeah. You never see them, but they see you. That was just a sort of a performance and an homage to Jesus Malverde, who is a sort of a a folkloric figure. He is sort of known as the Robin Hood um, for drug traffickers. People come to this shrine to pay homage, to uh, leave their uh, US dollar blessings. This is evidence of just how revered Jesus Malverde is here. The cartel is so deeply entrenched here that narcos are practically indistinguishable from locals who act as important allies. You're gonna see all these baseball caps. Yeah. 
with, uh, you know, images or figures related to the Narcos. Chapel here, you see the initials of Joaquin Guzman Loera. You see all the drug lords. Locally, these guys are, they're revered. They're like heroes. Heroes. When I was like 12 years old, and I used to speak with my classmates, like, you know, what do you want to be when you grow older? And they we used to tell narco. They don't want to be the next Michael Jordan. They want to be the next Chapo. Despite being one of the world's biggest economies, Mexico consistently underperforms, according to the World Bank. More than 40% of the population lives below the poverty line. Let's say the idea that Americans would want to wipe out cartels would not sit well with people here. It's not like they're going to fight for them, but if they can, they will protect these narcos. But these cartels are also responsible for untold violence and death. The way the people say it here is they don't mess with us, so we're fine. Narcos commit the vast majority of murders across Mexico and are notorious for their particularly gruesome killing tactics. They're criminals, and we know that sooner or later they will have to pay. Vega says it's not just in life that cartel members are revered, that around here, even in death, their influence and status casts a long shadow. Miguel Angel Vega. This is Cementerio Jardines de Lumayo, Jardines de Lumayo Cemetery. And you're gonna see some massive tombs. Vega says this is the opulent final resting place of former drug lords and their loved ones. This is like five storage building, and it, it is actually a tomb. This is a replica of the Taj Mahal. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen cemetery quite like this. Like this one right here? This could be like a little condo. These are house sizes. There are no inscriptions whatsoever, no dates, no names, nothing. I spoke to one of the architects and he was telling me like this tomb, for example, half million dollars, American dollars. A half because million. it's Florentine marble. They have AC and TV and a kitchen also. This is insane. I swear that you were driving through a residential neighborhood. U.S. Southern Command estimates that transnational criminal organizations make $310 billion a year, and disrupting that money flow is a critical part of the Biden administration's drug control strategy. They do that largely by monitoring electronic transactions, but drug deals are conducted mostly with cash. If cartels took that money to a bank, the government could trace it to specific people and arrest them. To avoid that, they turn to streets like this, where they can exchange dollars for pesos off the books. What are we looking at here? You see all these umbrellas? Yeah. These, these women are dollars exchangers. Uh -huh. so you're going to see a whole bunch of this. Wow. Like maybe 300. I'm going to ask, you know, what's the rate? I'm going to just stop. Yeah. Oh, here's two young women here. How is the change? 17.5 lo compras. But every now and then, like, someone comes alone with half a million dollars. Half a million. And they go like, well, I want to exchange this. So money laundering is like coursing through the city. The government knows this. Every single person in this city, we all know that. According to the U.S. Defense Department, Mexico's drug cartels control more than a third of the entire country. In 2019, Mexico's president created a new militarized police force that he called the National Guard. But frequently, their firepower is outmatched by the cartels who are armed with an arsenal of weapons that they smuggle in from the U.S. The U.S. government is aware that these criminal organizations are armed up with weaponry coming from the U.S., one of their main sources of power. How is it that more isn't being done? That was one of the conclusions that I came to very quickly after arriving in Mexico as ambassador, that we could and should be making a priority in this. This is not DEA's issue. As ambassador, I tried to shift the focus to this issue. I asked the Justice Department to brief me on what was being done 
in our country to try to curb this flow of weapons. We talk about these Mexican criminal organizations and how bad they are, but we have responsibility from the United States for, for arming them. In June of 2023, the Biden administration announced it was making it a new priority to stop cartels from smuggling firearms out of the country. And senior justice officials acknowledged that the U.S. is a source of the lion's share of guns trafficked into Mexico. People question whether police and the armed forces are really there to protect the population. For decades, Mexican law enforcement has been linked to human rights abuses, including forced disappearances, torture, and extrajudicial killings, including that of five unarmed civilians caught on video in the spring of 2023. The government violated human rights. That's for sure, that happened. And not so long time ago, corruption in Mexico has affected every single part of its institutions, not only at the federal level, but state and local uh, levels uh, as well. And we are fighting corruption uh, very seriously. The cartel has deep, deep roots within the country that makes it so appealing so, for so many people. Thankfully, we are investing uh, a lot of resources on small and medium-sized communities because this is where uh, the, the problem has developed. And, and by the way, in a lot of those communities, people actually like the cartels more than they like the government. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> I know where you're coming from. Uh, that's, that's, and we heard that for, for, for ourselves. I, 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 I have. I do not think that um, that's the case. There was a big problem, that's for sure, and you are right. We need to acknowledge that. We do not acknowledge we had that problem. Then we cannot move forward. Still uh, a long way ahead, but we are in the right direction. You gotta take this call. You gotta take this call. Sí, te, te, te escucho. Drug cartels are not completely underground here. They function more like a shadow government and can be reached with the right connections. Okay, no te preocupes. Sorry. What's the latest? This man is gonna talk to us. Who is this? This is a major uh, player inside the Sinaloa cartel. It's not just anybody. He's way high, way high. What I, when I say way high, it's someone who troubles China, goes to uh, South America, he goes to Europe. Everywhere the Sinaloa cartel has its tentacles. Yes. It's one of the uh, decision makers. What do you know of this location? Usually, that's where they dump the bodies, the executions, they dump the bodies in this neighborhood. Yeah, I know. You ready? Yes, I am. Tell me when we need to turn off the cameras. Yeah, I think by now you should put the cameras down. One and a half kilometers. Turn right. All right, here we go. What is your role in the Sinaloa cartel? This man wouldn't reveal his identity as a condition of speaking publicly about Sinaloa's criminal operations. He said he's been a narco for 30 years. You're taking a risk by allowing us to come meet with you here. He told us that while the U.S. government has been fighting a drug war, American citizens have been funding and arming the cartels. How fast can you get a weapon of war from the U.S. here to Sinaloa? In a day. Wow. The drug money buys more guns for you. Mm -hmm. If the U.S. stopped buying drugs, what would happen to the cartel? The U.S. government calls the Sinaloa cartel one of the most dangerous narco-terrorist organizations in the world. So are you a terrorist group? He acknowledged the U.S.-led crackdown and said they were putting some parts of their fentanyl supply chain on pause, but considered it a temporary setback. Entonces, 
And how quickly do you think that things will return to normal? Culiacan is just one city. In regions all across Mexico, narcos are still producing fentanyl and smuggling record shipments into the U.S. U.S. intelligence estimates that cartels are actually trafficking four times the amount law enforcement seizes at the border. We're not going to interdict our way out of this problem. We are fueling um, the cartel's ability to run this trade. It's just a vicious cycle that continues. People in the United States say, oh, these drugs are all coming from Mexico. Mexico's got to fix this problem, which is certainly a legitimate point. But it's only part of the story, right? Because another part of the story is the money, the guns. Nothing we're doing is changing, yet the problem is only growing. That is correct. Every passing year. That is correct. And I, I do not see, to this day, any kind of recognition by the U.S. government that this is something that uh, requires new thinking. I think it's a failure of imagination, frankly, on our part. We are facing a crisis, the likes of which we have never seen before. We have been waging a drug war for many, many decades. It's not gotten better, it's only gotten worse. Where's the long-term win here? Ultimately, uh, success is going to be less deaths of American people. Our country is being invaded. Maybe not by soldiers, maybe not by bombs, but it's being invaded by drugs. We are arming them while our citizens are dying. This is a war, but we're not fighting it. We're being killed.